Hi, and thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, brought to you by Celebrity.com. This week, we're going to talk about the Royals, Taylor Swift, Big Little Lies, and Downton Abbey. We do have spoilers up to episode two of season two of Big Little Lies and up to the last aired episode of Downton Abbey. Hi, I'm Katie, the founder and editor of Slubitchy.com, and I write a Slubitchy. Hi, uh, <laughs> I'm Chandra. I'm the head writer for Slubitchy, and I write as Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> So last week it was fun because we recorded twice and it felt like the second time we didn't give a shit. It was a lot of fun. I had a good time. Well, again, I'm sorry that I was an idiot and that I didn't. No, no, don't apologize. (laughs) No, it was it was so stupid. I thought I had turned on the mic and I had not. It worked out great, I thought. I was glad it worked out that way. Second time it was more fun for me. (laughs) We moved through everything very fast. It was nice. It's like we had a practice round. Yeah, basically. This week we got new ads on the site. You may notice that there's an ad that goes over the bottom. The top ad is bigger. There's ads that are more interactive. It took a long time for us to move to those. I interviewed over 10 different companies and took many months, probably almost a year, to find the right company to work with. They do not have automatic sound. I know that they take a little bit longer to load. They're similar to the ads that other sites use, but if we can help it, and I've written it into the contract with this new company, which is excellent, by the way, there will never be automatic sound. I wrote into the contract that it has to be user initiated by click, not mouse over, because I've worked with other companies where they think it's a user initiation if you mouse over the ad and it, and it has sound. We do not have any sound. So while the ads are bigger, um, hopefully they're not as annoying as other sites. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a problem with the ad at the bottom or with the ads, you know, interspersed with the the post. The only Mm -hmm. minor issue I have is that there's a lag time as the ads load. And there's a little longer load. Yeah. 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 This company was a lot easier to work with than other ones in terms of, first of all, the people are way better. The, The amount of toxicity, I will say, in the ad companies is enormous. Like there were a lot of douche bros that I talked to at different companies Um, this one, I just, it was just one line of code. They were so easy to work with, really nice. Once I found them, it seemed easy, but then I realized how much work I had done to find them. So yeah, it does take a little bit longer to load. (laughs) I mean, I remember you talking about that, you know, over the months as you were searching, you know, you spoke to this toxic douche bro. You talked to this guy who, oh my God, yeah, who totally, you know, treated you like crap because you're a woman. That happened several times with several different companies that other sites work with and recommended where they would promise something. And then later on, I'd be like, oh, remember we agreed on this. Then they acted like I was emotional for asking for it. Oh, sorry, we upset you. No, you didn't honor the terms that we agreed upon. So, but yeah, I found a great company and I'm really happy that we're working with them. This week was Pretty good. I mean, it wasn't the worst week and it wasn't the most slow and it wasn't the most jam packed either. Yeah, there were some interesting stories here and there. It still feels like it's slow right now. I keep waiting for, you know, something big to happen. Don't you feel like there should have been a big summer story by now? Like a big Some divorce. Breakup yeah. Or divorce. Yeah. That would be good. I'm waiting for that. And Bradley Cooper <laughs> and Arena, they're not doing it. Like they were trying to become no, that is... they're trying to be the the breakup of the summer and they're just not. No. <laughs> nobody cares. And nobody believes the Lady Gaga angle either. And they're trying to sell that and we still can't figure that out. Yeah, I'm waiting for the next thing to happen. That'll be fun. So we had a lot of royal stories this week. Yeah, the um let's see. Two weekends ago it was Trooping the Color and then Oh yeah, there was the Order of the Garter and then Royal Ascot. And they were like one right yes. after the other. Mm-hmm. And the Order of the Garter is like this big fancy schmancy thing that they do at Windsor Castle once a year. It's like a knighthood royals thing. I looked it up, but I really don't know what it said. Yeah, like <laughs> if you have the Order of the Garter, you're a knight of the garter. But but it's different than okay. like a traditional knighthood. A traditional knighthood, you're oh. called Sir, blah, blah, blah. But if you're a knight of the garter, it's something different. It's put to the side different. <laughs> and there can only be a certain number of knights of the garter. And they don't all have to be men, actually, which I thought was interesting. Okay. The queen just added two women 
to the Knights of the Garter. Cool. Oh, that's good that they can have women knights. Yeah, and uh, Princess Anne is a knight of the Garter as well. So William, Prince William was there, um, all the Queen's sons, Princess Anne, and then the Queen made two foreign kings stranger knights of the the garter and this sounds so fancy and like i know isn't that i would much rather be a stranger knight than a knight but uh yeah so it was king wilhelm alexander of the netherlands and king felipe of spain the queens came along to see their husbands and then that was like the big thing of queen letizia and queen oh what's her name Maxima. Uh, yeah, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. I only know because I wrote it down and I'm reading it. <laughs> yeah, Queen Maxima. I'm going off memory. And so that's why I'm like, what? Wait, what happened? Um, yeah, they were both there. And to her credit, Kate seemed to get along very well with Queen Maxima. Yeah, she- they were very buddy-buddy. But there was a little moment where it it really did appear like Kate completely ignored and blanked out Queen Letizia. And I don't understand why that happened. I mean, maybe they had... I didn't even see that. Did you write about it? I don't remember. Yeah, I did write about it. Okay. I read it. I just don't remember. (laughs) King Felipe and Queen Letizia arrived to the actual Order of the Garter ceremony in a separate car than Kate and William, obviously. And when Kate got out of the car, she just breezed past Letizia almost as if she was ignoring Letizia on purpose. Ooh. It was weird because Letizia was looking at her and like almost expecting her to curtsy and Kate didn't. It just seemed like a very odd moment. Maybe someone told her to do something else and she got distracted or focused on the other thing. Who knows what happened? The point is more like imagine if that had been Megan and she had failed to, you know, follow protocol and curtsy to a Queen. Or like when she didn't open the door or something, or she opened her own door and that was a big deal. Yeah. She oh, she door. broke protocol. She <laughs> opened her own door. She shut her own door. <laughs> but yeah, we got to see Kate um, at Royal Ascot the first day and then at the Order of the Garter. And yeah. her fashion was very Kate. Let's let's say that. <laughs> Dip, dippy. Matronly Dippy. Um, Twee. Doily. Yeah. Doily. Yeah. So we also had the news that the Royal Foundation, which originally had, was the Umbrella Foundation for the Sussexes and the Cambridges, is splitting. And they've been previewing this for months. It's splitting into two separate organizations so they can pursue their own charities and interests. And that was something that has happened for a while. They did that with their press their umbrella press organization also split prior to this. So it just seemed like a natural change. Yeah. And I said that when they announced the splitting of the households months ago, I said, you know, the Royal Foundation is going to be next because it would be too unwieldy for all four of those people to try to come together to do all of their separate interests. And they have their staffs, too. I would assume that, you know, Harry and Megan have more progressive staff and that want to pursue those charities. Well, I, it's also about control and whether yeah. or not William is controlling, which is one of the little preview articles that was written over the weekend or Sunday or Monday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. They basically said, like, William was fine with Harry and Meghan being in the foundation as long as he could control whatever they were doing. Yeah, obviously, Harry and Meghan don't want to be controlled by their brother-in-law or brother. Yeah. We all... <laughs> I don't... There's a lot of talk about... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just... I feel like William really push this breakup to happen right now and it's happening while Megan is on maternity well, yeah on maternity leave. it feels yeah. very rude and rushed the initial reports were that William and Kate were the ones pushing for the split immediately I think it's going to make them look bad in the long term because Harry was the one doing the most within the Royal Foundation yeah I don't know enough about it. I just get the impression that William is a person who is both controlling and doesn't want to work. So (laughs) he'll want other people not to work either. And he finds it threatening when they work more than he does. So that's probably part of it as well. Yeah, you've always said that that's his dynamic with Kate. He's the one telling Kate not to work as much. I feel like she could do more, but I don't know. I sort of agree with you that... 
she takes her cues from William. Yeah. But who knows what their dynamic really is. So um, you also want to talk about the York sisters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Princesses Eugenie and Beatrice came out to Royal Ascot and their fashion was a little questionable. Eugenie had on this dress that had darting at the boob area that made it look like she was very cold. I'll say that. <laughs> It, it was directly over where her nipples would be, and it looked like her, she was nipping out, and it wasn't that. It was just the way the dress was made. Well, uh, did you see all the people making the references to Anne Hathaway's Oscar dress? Yes. The Prada, the Prada dress that Anne Hathaway wore. It was pink, and she it was like a last-minute change for her, and it had those the darting at the boobs. It was horrible. Anyway, I just liked that everyone remembers that. It's like iconic for the wrong reasons because of those stupid yes. boob darts. But yeah. Boob darts, yeah. <laughs> As I said in, in my stories about them, I like that Beatrice and Eugenie are, you know, they're a little bit more avant-garde. They take more risks. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, they've never known how to dress for their body type. Yeah, that's the issue. And it's not a body shaming thing. It's just, you know, work it. Don't dress so dowdy and frumpy. Yeah. And I think they both have very nice figures. Like they're curvy. They have hips. They have boobs. Obviously, you know, we all saw Eugenie's whatever. But <laughs> they could look so cute in the right style. You know, you can blame it on they have to be conservative because, you know, they're princesses, but they don't have to be that matronly. I bet whoever dresses Kate was dressing Eugenie and Beatrice for the Royal Ascot because Beatrice's dress it was like this doily dress <laughs> yeah. looked like something Kate would wear. Yeah. And so I bet they're having the same royal stylists picking these dowdy clothes and thinking it gives them weight get gravitas or something you know i think kate dresses older because she thinks it makes her seem more mature and ready to be queen and it just makes her look dowdy and frumpy and like she's not with the times who's ever helping her make those decisions might be doing that to the other royal women i don't know no i don't think that they like share a stylist uh eugenie and beatrice you know they do their own thing okay they rarely wear the same designers as kate kate has her own person okay. now she has her own dedicated stylist somebody dresser i just think that beatrice just chose the wrong look you know but it did look very kate it actually looked very <laughs> similar to what kate was wearing which was also hideous yeah I hope that they get their stride again. <laughs> I remember how they looked at William and Kate's wedding because they showed up in those great hats, remember? Yeah. And everyone was talking about back then how cute they were. And so, yeah, they can get that back. <laughs> well, everybody made fun of them because of the That's hats. That's cool, I thought. You know, they were just <laughs> no, Beatrice, very British. Beatrice's hat looked like a toilet bowl. <laughs> it was like a side hat with a... I don't remember. <laughs> so this week taylor swift released the new video for you need to calm down which is she just threw all the gay celebrities she could find into that video and it's like a gay trailer park with a ton of celebrities <laughs> basically it has all the queer eye guys rupaul adam rapon billy porter laverne cox ellen there's more and there's an appropriation argument to me made and there's also the argument that, yeah, at least she's doing something and she's caring and she's coming out clearly on one side, which is good. But then today we were hearing that it is very similar to Beyonce's 2011 party video, which also took place at a trailer park and has a party vibe. And there's scenes that seem straight from it. Like they both have these above ground pools they're laying in. They both are wearing these kind of fur coats in the trailer park. I mean, there were some real parallels in those videos. Yeah, but like in the comments, no one thought that. I mean, maybe we've been invaded by the snake family, but I... Well, I knew... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I think we... I knew that would happen. Yeah, it always happens with Beyonce. I think that Ugh. there's a stronger case to be made for Taylor homaging Beyonce when it's with the Billboard Music Awards, the Mayo Cella yeah. thing. I think that was a <laughs> yeah, that was a stronger argument for she's copying Beyonce because the way she staged it, it was very Beychella. It really was. Yeah. And yeah. 
I also think that there's a stronger case to be made when she did look what you made me do. And it really did feel like she was cribbing from formation. And especially with the okay. sing song equality of, um, you know, Beyonce was get in formation and then Taylor was there is no explanation. There is only reputation. It, it was very. Oh, OK. Yeah. I just felt like that was a lot stronger case to be made of. Taylor is, you know, watching Beyonce. She's homaging this. She's obviously you know very influenced by Beyonce the thing about it is is that a lot of artists are influenced by Beyonce and it's not yeah. a crime yeah. for a pop artist to say I saw Beyonce do it and I I was like oh I, I can do my own take on that that's not a crime it's not a pop culture crime but just admit it like say pop culture crime <laughs> yeah just say like you know Beyonce's my favorite I want to like do everything like her you know just say you that you have to be careful when you say that you know what happened with blurred lines when they were like oh we got influenced by Marvin Gaye they got the shit suit out of them that's exactly what happened they said well they actually they actually stole Marvin Gaye's hook that's why they got sued i don't think i don't know about that <laughs> no they did <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that i don't know yeah there were a lot of similarities in those videos good for taylor for <laughs> doing something but you know i really it's all about taylor all the time and then the whole thing with katie perry no one gave a shit about that feud that was came out in 2014 that they had a feud over supposedly some backup dancers deflecting from taylor's team to katie's team nobody cared and then taylor made this big thing like look i'm forgiving katie come on nobody gives a shit and she acted like the press was pitting them against each other no to be fair, like the Katie Taylor feud was a huge deal because Taylor made it into a huge deal. She wrote an album about it. You know, she made multiple <laughs> references and songs about how much she hated Katie and how Katie was ruining her life because Katie, you know. What was that video she did where she got all her girl squad to come? Bad do blood. That, video? that was bad yeah, blood. That was the Katie Perry feud, right? Yep. That was yeah. all about, you know, she's going to show Katie Perry that she. She has more friends than Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my gosh. So they they made up their burger and fries and rainbow barbecues or whatever. I don't care. But I mean, just think about that imagery too, though, that this is supposed to be Taylor Swift's big gay pride anthem. And then the video ends with two straight women hugging. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. But, oh, speaking of whether or not Taylor Swift is straight, okay. a lot of people were saying that the, her hair dye in hair. the video was yeah. representing the bisexual flag, the bisexual pride yeah. flag. What do you think? Somebody said it was like the backwards bisexual pride flag. I don't know. Like, maybe she's just hinting that she is. One of my friends was real obsessed with the whole Taylor Swift, Carly Kloss thing. And he got into the weeds in that and thought that they had something going on. And that's why they were, their friendship ended so abruptly. I sort of, I sort of believe that. I really do. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like this next level conspiracy theorist about their relationship. <laughs> but I like, you know, I've read some of the, the stuff about it. And I kind of believe that Carly and Taylor were maybe together at some point or dating they're or sexually involved. I mean, they're so beautiful together. I could see them hooking up. Well, they look like sisters. That's exactly true. You like people who have the same face as you or who look like you and they look to Well, alike. that's Joe Alwyn. That really is. They look yeah. like brother and sister. Oh, my God. Yeah, they have that same face. So, I yeah, I could buy that she... I could believe, <laughs> she'd buy, believe that she's bi. But I don't really care because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's still that's Taylor a, Swift. She's still a narcissist. It's still always about her. And yeah, that's the other yeah. thing. There's this debate going on of, you know, is she bisexual? Is she coming out? But do people really care at this point? Like after all of these years no. and all, no, all of those relationships with men and, you know, just on and on and on. Some people might, but they're not us. So <laughs> we're obviously not part of the snake family. No, 
So Big Little Lies is back. Is that on at the same time as Billions? Uh, well, Billions is over now. The season ended. Oh, yeah, oh the so, season ended when it premiered. Okay. Yeah, that's why I've been watching. The finale of Billions was the first night of, yeah, Big Little Lies. So I watched okay. the first episode a few days later, and I thought it was okay. The first episode was just okay. It was sort of establishing the timeline. The summer has gone past. Uh, so it's my- so we are going to have spoilers for Big Little Eyes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I forgot to say we'll have spoilers up to episode two. Yeah, up to episode okay. two. Yeah. And so it's like probably about six months after Perry's death. And yes. uh, the first episode was OK. The second episode was absolutely bonkers. Oh, my! <laughs> I cannot. There's a lot happening. Huh? Yeah, a lot. So much happened in the second episode. I cannot even believe it. Like, I don't even know how they're going to go on for the next however many seven, eight episodes. So <laughs> Reese Witherspoon's husband left her. You know, Adam Scott okay. left her. And uh, now Nicole Kidman and Shailene Woodley's kids all know that they're related. Oh, they are because related. Reese Withers, yeah, Reese Witherspoon's daughter told everybody. Okay. And Laura Dern's husband is going to jail. And, you know, it was just like a thing after thing. Oh, and Bonnie's mother finally arrived. And it turns out that she's like, she has like a sixth sense. She's like a medium or something like that. What? Yeah. And that is weird. And Bonnie has sort of this, this gift as well. And I don't know, Whatever. just 20 million <laughs> things happened in this one episode. It was crazy. It was awesome. Though. So is it going to be like Game of Thrones? Should I start watching it? I tried to watch the first season. I only watched part of the first episode and it seemed like all these rich bitches that I, who I wouldn't care about. I was like, I can't relate to these people when they're in their lives and that's why i didn't watch it really i was like i i can't relate to these rich women i really didn't think i could well i got into it later after the air date i watched like a marathon one day and i got more okay. into it the later the first season went on nicole kidman's mm -hmm. performance got really really good and really moving okay reese witherspoon wasn't as annoying as the season went on, you know, but she, let me tell you, she's peak annoying in this second. Everyone, every single woman knows a woman like Madeline right. Reese Witherspoon's character, yeah. you yeah. know, some busybody, a gossip, someone who can't shut the fuck up, you know, and just mm -hmm. on and on. And that's her. That's the character. Uh, yeah. But I wish Laura Dern's character would die. I wish she would fall <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> and, and that has really nothing to do with my general dislike of Laura Dern's acting style. It's just, I, it's just I, I hate her character so hard. But even I was... I had a hard... Yeah, even Sorry. I was like, you know, Renata, that character had some really juicy scenes in episode two. And I was laughing my ass off because Laura Dern was acting the crap out of it. But yeah, <laughs> I would say watch it because it's, right. you know, it's a um, limited thing. It's not going to go on forever like Game of Thrones. Should I just pick it up second season? Yeah. Should I just pick it up second season? Yeah, I'll do that instead of go. I won't go watch the whole first season. I'll watch second season. Then we can talk about it. <laughs> I would say, you know, watch the last few episodes of the first season. Okay. Maybe like the Midway. last two. And yeah, you'll figure out what the plot is. Okay. I mean, it's just a soap opera about rich people, but it's good. <laughs> And Downton Abbey, the movie's coming out, and that is coming out in September. Yeah. We've had some, like, exciting news for, like, costume dramas, and <laughs> I'm a costume drama period piece whore. Yeah. I love those kind of movies. I really do. You know, stuffy British people emoting and... <laughs> being very dramatic and falling in love in you know a corset i'm there yeah i'm like okay with it i'll watch it but it's not my thing you know i enjoy it but i don't love it i, I love it but you've seen all of downton <laughs> abbey right like you No, i didn't see the last couple seasons i don't think <gasps> So you don't even know that Lady Mary got with Matthew Good. No, Did you I remember Lady Edith lost her daughter or some shit. Like she was being raised by the peasants. There was something <laughs> and like then, that. Then Edith came back and she stole her daughter Took back her. from the peasants. Yeah, and that's where I ended. 
<laughs> well, and then Edith finds a nice guy and he's just like a nobody or so she thinks like his job is taking care of this grand estate because he's like this lowly second or third cousin to the actual earl or whatever okay. of this estate. And it turns out that this earl dies and the guy that Edith is dating, he's the only male heir. So, Damn. yeah. So Edith gets her happy ending. And Ma- right. Lady Mary ends up married to Matthew Goode, who is like, he, all he does is own a garage. <laughs> oh, so he's the chauffeur guy who was married to her sister who died? No, 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 no. Tom is still Tom. <laughs> uh, Tom, Tom. That's a different guy. Okay. Never yeah. Mind. Well, Matthew Goode and Tom, they go into business together on this garage, but that's all they do. Oh, okay. So right. Lady Mary is not married to anyone titled or anything like that. She's just married <laughs> to some guy. And so Lady- in the... Tr- Sorry, no, I could go on and on about it. Sorry. I'm like, okay, whatever. I remember watching it and Tom was like getting into estate management or something. I was like, oh my God, this is so boring. <laughs> like I didn't even care. He's trying to modernize the estates. And then the dad was like, no, let's do it the old way. And I was like, who cares? This is boring. So... Oh, I love all that. I love all that. Oh, oh, okay. (laughs) That's why it's not my thing. Uh, (laughs) I I love like a state drama. (laughs) Oh my God. Come on. It's like work. It's like they're talking about their business. Come on. No, I love when they like spend 30 minutes arguing over whether or not they should have pigs on the estate. I loved that. (laughs) (laughs) That is so boring to me. That is super boring. Oh my God. I I want people to have sex and like hook up and betray each other. That's that's what I like. Well, I mean, that was part of the show too, but the pig plot line was very (laughs) integral to the to Down Abbey, trust me. I know exactly what I'm talking about. It was so boring to me. Um. (laughs) But yeah, the character posters for the Downton Abbey movie look amazing. (laughs) Except for Lady Mary's fucked up wig. Oh, God. That's the only thing that makes me want to not see the movie is the wig work. Oh, Lord. But yeah, the rest of it looks amazing. And the Dowager Countess is still alive and probably saying pithy comments all over the place. It's worth watching for her. I love her. And the whole plot line of the movie is that the king and queen are coming to visit. Ooh. That's going to be amazing. That's how the trailer ends. I saw the trailer. I saw that movie late night. I loved it. And the trailer was before that. And I had seen it before, but it's different seeing it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. So that's how the trailer ends with a preview of, like, you don't get to see the king and queen, so. Your Majesties. Welcome to Downton Abbey. And we also got our first look at Little Women. Vanity Fair had exclusive photos from Greta Gerwig's (laughs) adaptation of Little Women with Timothy Chalamet as Laurie and Saoirse Ronan as Joe. And I'm excited just for those two. You're going crazy over that. It was cracking me up. I was like, okay. (laughs) I don't care about this stuff. That's that's another thing that's that's totally your thing. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Well, I mean, you've read Little Women, obviously. Yeah, ages ago. And I saw the one with um, Winona Ryder and what's her face? Claire Danes. And people are defending the Winona Ryder one. And that is such garbage. It is a garbage I don't version. Care. I'm not attached to any of these. I'm not going to fight for it. Go for it. I don't have a. You don't have any in skin fight. in the game. Well, all right. I'll no, just. No, I don't care. You could you could trash it. Sure, it sucks. I'll agree with you. It does suck. The '90s Little Women was so poorly cast. It really was. And Winona okay. Ryder, I love her, but she was not a good Joe. She just wasn't. Anyway, but yeah, this don't new- trash Sense and Sensibility, and I'll I'll come for you if you say that there's something wrong with Sense and Sensibility. But what the Emma Thompson one? Yeah, that is. Oh, that's sublime. one of my favorites. I love that movie. Yeah, I love that me too. I had it on VHS. I watched it all the time. That's a great. By Ang Lee. Yeah. Oof. Um. So, but yeah, Little Women. I'm just gonna see it for Sersha and Timothy, honestly, because <laughs> I'm not so sure about the rest of the people. But I feel like they got that core love story, but not really love story, done right. 
It's a friendship yeah. story between Joe and Lori. I'm very excited. So that'll be cool. That's out December 25th. And we were talking, it's going to be Oscar Beatty. <laughs> um. <laughs> And let's move on to the user feedback. Our phone number is 434-218-3219. You can text us or leave a voicemail there. Last week in the comments of the week, we talked about the great white chocolate versus dark chocolate and milk chocolate debate and the people getting all snotty about only eating dark chocolate. And a lot of people have very strong feelings about this issue of whether white chocolate is actually chocolate. It is not. And whether (laughs) dark chocolate is... (laughs) I had to stick that in. Yeah, just to be a garbage person, you're going to try to editorialize on white chocolate. It is chocolate and it's good. White chocolate is amazing. It doesn't have cocoa in it. It's not chocolate. So... A lot of people came out strongly on either side, uh, on Twitter, in the comments. La Unica Angelina said, don't tell Kaiser I love dark chocolate and I'm a Gemini. (laughs) And Muya is a Gemini too. Somebody's a Gemini. And Heather and Muya are with you. They love white chocolate. And Orange Owl agreed with me. She said, white chocolate isn't just garbage. It's not even chocolate. And then other people were just really sweet about the whole podcast, and we, we thank you for that. And Blue Sky said that listening to us argue about dark chocolate made her Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, though, we could do a whole podcast on chocolate, like, and argue about it the entire time. But anyway. It would just make me want to eat it, which is going to be awful. I still have to wait a little bit to eat the stupid chocolate. But um, that was fun. I enjoyed talking to you about chocolate yeah (laughs) i've been enjoying white chocolate every day since that argument (laughs) still wouldn't eat it um and then we got a nice comment from victoria cuss on twitter she said she tweeted all of us including hecate and she said some days it's you guys that literally get me out of bed in the morning other days it's rage tweeting trump but mostly it's you thanks for the laughs Oh, that was nice. Very Thank nice. You, Victoria. Yeah. Let's move on to the comments of the week. So my comments of the week were on the posts about Eugenie and Beatrice's outfits and <laughs> just people I agreed with and perplexed said those dresses are ugly. That's what I'm judging, not their bodies. And that's the point we wanted to make too. We were, we were not, yep. we're just judging fashion. There's a distinct difference. And that's very similar to the conversation we had around Olivia Munn's fashion and, and that whole Ooh, thing. Just as a side note, there were new photos of her this week at some premiere, Olivia Munn. I saw them. And I no one them. covered them. Did you see that? Like, well, hardly anyone covered them. Red Carpet Fashion Awards did, and she was complimentary. I think she stayed out of that, but nobody else did. I did notice that, and I was paying attention to that. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I think she's going to find that she's getting iced out of our community but we've done that with other celebrities too where there's celebrities who we just don't talk about anymore because they don't like us they don't they talk smack about bloggers okay then we won't even talk about you so go ahead yeah it's not that olivia munn's being locked out of her community it's that she's gonna find uh, ours (laughs) it's just gonna be hard for her to promote anything these days yeah we're not gonna cover her interviews Mm -mm. yeah you know she What's her next thing? You know, she said that she was both hot and smart at the same time. What's her, ne- you know, she said that like 15 different times over th- four years. <laughs> well, fuck her anyway. Yeah. Let's- no, I, yeah. All right. In my comments of the week, I just have one comment, but I would like to point everyone to this comment thread of uh, <laughs> the story that I did about Lena Headey talking about one of the big mysteries around Game of Thrones season seven and season eight, which was what ever happened to Cersei's pregnancy yeah. when she got pregnant with Jamie's baby. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. She supposedly got pregnant in season seven. The question sort of lingered over season eight of is she still pregnant? And then they tried to make it as 
you know, she told Euron that she was pregnant with his baby. Well, anyway, so <laughs> Lena Headey came out and said, actually, we filmed a scene where Cersei found out that she had a miscarriage and that happened. Oh. That was supposed to have happened in season seven. So that would have mm-hmm. answered so many questions about Cersei's actions at the end of the season and beyond. Yeah. Anyway, Jen's comment of the week is, when the entire season seven leaked, I remember this being part of the plot and I was expecting it in the final episode. So I was curious as to why it was removed. Now, after seeing this mess of season eight, I honestly think they decided to keep Cersei pregnant so Tyrion could keep repeating that she loved her children yeah. because that was his only bargaining chip when he met her. It's a very astute comment, actually. And then she yes. wrote, too long, didn't read. Basically, Cersei's pregnancy was just another shit plot point because mm-hmm. Dan and David had no idea and didn't care about the ending of the show. I honestly wish I could have been a fly in the wall in their writing session. Imagine how painful it would be to hear those two bros bouncing <laughs> ideas off of each other <laughs> and actually believing that they were good. <laughs> so it was just like a rant against Weiss and Benioff. <laughs> and she, I mean, everything Jen said is absolutely 100% correct. Yeah. The way that those male writers m- absolutely mishandled the female characters Character. is criminal. Yeah, it it's bad. criminal. It was- is bad they addressed that on late night i mean the whole team of writers was white dudes and yeah they you know just mindy kaling's character came in and that was the only <laughs> woman they've had ever and it was it was interesting and that's how a lot of workplaces are that's how a lot of places are and it sets up this environment that doesn't let people advance it doesn't let in other type of voices other other genders <laughs> and it ruins our shows. Yeah. So, it does. Yeah. And I I worry about that with Big Little Lies too because it's all written by men. Oh, I mean really? they're Yeah. But I don't know. Well, we can get into that in a different podcast. But. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for listening, bitches. Thanks, bitches. Thank you for listening to the Slabitchy podcast. If you could please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or your platform of choice, it will really help us, and we appreciate it a lot. You can call us and leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our website is celebity.com, and we're also on Twitter under that handle and on Instagram as Celebity Official. Thanks again.